In this video, I go over the key factors why long distance running in both Kenya and Norway has reached such a high level, especially over the last decade. I go over some research about the training methods and some physiological studies. I call the training methods the new school of running. Why? Let's dive in. We saw another remarkable season from some of the Norwegian and Kenyan long distance runners. Looking at Norway, there's of course Jacob Ingebrigtsen, who won gold at the 5000 meters at the World Cup in Budapest and broke the Duma world record in the Paris Diamond League. The other famous distance runner from Norway, Caroline Grofdal, won the European Cross Country Championships recently for the fourth time in a row after a successful training block in Sierra Nevada. She is also the national record holder for the 5 kilometers in her country. For Kenya or East African countries in general, there's of course for several decades already dominance in the sport. This season, there were some magnificent performances from Fred Kibiegen, breaking multiple world records, Kelvin Kiptum, who broke the marathon world record in Chicago, and Elliot himself, who won his fifth Berlin Marathon. While well, it's important to note that individual success varies, and not all individuals from these countries become elite runners, of course. Some general factors contribute to the overall success, like genetic factors. K and athletes are often associated with the Kalenjin tribe which has produced a disproportionate number of successful distance runners. Some researchers suggest that genetic factors such as higher percentage of slow twitch muscle fibers and efficient oxygen utilization may contribute to their success. Besides genetics, there are other important factors of course, such as high altitude training, cultural factors and socio-economic factors, especially the drive for Kenyans. Nevertheless, I think the most important factor might be the training method. In both these countries, the amount of threshold or tempo runs in the weekly volume is quite impressive. Running just below or at your threshold level is considered the new school of running in both these countries. Especially in Norway, they increased the amount of tempo or threshold work over the last decade with lactate testing available. A tempo run can be considered a continuous effort or long intervals around your half, marathon pace or marathon pace. I already made some videos about the Kenyan training method and the Norwegian style double threshold training. I will link to these videos at the end of the video. However, there is a lot more to tell about our training methods and it requires some research. First, I will dive into some studies about physiological differences between Kenyan and European runners. This is what I have found out so far. Despite the overall dominance of East African athletes, few scientific studies have been completed to clarify the physiological differences between African and Western distance runners. Looking at these physiological differences, in a paper from 2012, Energetics of Running and Top Level Marathon Runners from Kenya, where top 10 level Kenyan marathoners compared to 9 European top level marathoners. What they found was that the VO2 max or fractional utilization of the VO2 max and the running economy, so let's say the energy cost of running, were similar in both groups and this did not explain the Kenyan dominance in the sport. However, another older study I found and published in 1998 was titled African runners exhibit greater fatigue resistance, lower lactate accumulation, and higher oxidative enzyme activity. Here again, 9 African runners are compared to 8 European sub elite 10 km runners. Let's go over some figures of the paper. Like the title of the study implies, they found the African distance runners show less fatigue to a certain effort than the European athletes. Also, a lower lactate accumulation in the blood plasma, where lactate is a marker for muscle fatigue in distance running. And last, higher skeletal muscle oxidative enzyme capacities. But the cause of this is not clear at present. With more oxidative enzymes, like citrate synthase, see the figure, your muscles are able to use more oxygen. If these physiological differences come from different genetics or training, are still unclear according to this research. I couldn't find more research or data on the genetics from Kenyan or Norwegian runners. So it remains unclear if genetics play an important role in the high performance of these athletes. Let's now have a look at some of the studies about the training methods. For both Kenyan and Norwegian athletes, studies show that a lot of easy running combined with a higher volume of threshold or tempo running from 20 to 25% is a key factor to the high performance. The first study I mention here is a study looking at the Ingebrigtsen brothers. Three Norwegian brothers, all European 1500m champions. What is the secret? Most of the interval training, which was 20 to 25% of the training volume, was performed as threshold training with lactate values between 2.0 and 4.0 minimum. This is one of the key factors the study outlined for the high performance of the brothers. The big amount of training conducted by these runners in the zone is also along with the findings shown in a very recent article by Casado. 
deliberate practice in training different shades, the best Kenyan is Spanish long distance runners. Here they compared 19 world class Kenyans with 18 Spanish national standard athletes. Performance and training data were obtained for two year periods using training diaries. The conclusion was that the Kenyans completed more tempo runs and short interval training than the Spanish athletes as shown in these figures. Sweet Elite also posts an article about this paper. More tempo running, Kenyan ingredient to the Kenyan success. For my own training, I went to Great Boat, the Norwegian, in the Kenyan training method. I'll do bi-weekly on my Thursdays a double threshold session, or on the other week, a longer fartlek workout, which will work well for my marathon. As well as a tempo long run on my Saturdays on Moy Ben Road, like last weekend. My aim for my training here is to increase my total weekly volume, especially because I'm training for the marathon, of course, but also the percentage of threshold to tempo workouts in that weekly volume. I'm confident this can increase my performance over the longer distance for the marathon, but also for other distances in general. Well, this was it on my findings about the Norwegian and Kenyan dominance in long distance running. I hope this video gave you some new insights. And as always, if you still got it today, have fun and get on the run.